It's the week of July 4th, we're traveling to the Delaware Water Gap, a national recreation area along the border of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. We spent the first day of our trip visiting all of the gorgeous waterfalls in the area, then spent the next three days on the water, a 28 mile paddle trip down the Delaware River. Come with us on our journey as we venture down the river, we're now campsites, places of interest along the way. Here we are at Milford. And we're gonna go 28 miles along the Delaware River Gap down, down to, to Smithfield Beach. It's a calm, beautiful river right now. So let's have storms in a few hours. Hopefully we'll miss Maybe. them. Yeah. Camp somewhere in zone three in the first day. What do you think? Maybe six, seven, eight miles? Possibly. We'll see what we can get before the storms come. Looks beautiful now though. Starting our 28 mile journey on this beautiful Delaware River. First time ever, feels so exciting. Matt's already saw one bald eagle, I didn't see it. We were getting our safety instructions. But I think we're gonna see a lot. So we ran it through Adventure Sports. They're in East Stroudsburg. How much did we pay? Three, about $321 all in for two of us and a canoe and all the gear and the shuttle yeah. for a three day, two night. If you don't want to use an outfitter, hop on the free shuttle provided by the park, the Pocono Pony. This free shuttle service starts each year in late May, continues each Saturday and Sunday until Labor Day. This includes service on Memorial Day and Independence Day. Children and pets are permitted on the shuttle. Here we are in Delaware State Forest in the Snow Hill area off Laurel Run Road. We're on Campsite 5 for like 16 bucks a night. They come with giant bears, never ending rain, some human crap, and nice one right there. No trees to hang tarp on for the rain. And did I mention bears? Oh, I see. You might run after us. Oh, is he king massive? Um, My grainy video probably doesn't do the size of the bear justice. He was a chunky boy, and he was headed straight towards our campsite, less than 50 yards away. After getting to our site, it poured for the next 30 minutes with no end in sight. There were just no good trees to hang a tarp on, that big bear right next to us, and it was raining too hard for a fire. So we ended up just leaving the site to go grab some pizza and wings, then headed to a local motel for the night. The pizza place gave me free garlic knots and the Goonies was on TV. Yeah, 10 out of 10, we'll do that again. So we're about 2.25 in. Water right next to us is crystal clear. Look at that sky. We have the sounds of nature. It's hard to imagine it's going to start storming in like two hours.
After Minisink Island, we stop for a quick lunch break on the rocky shore. Less than a mile west of the island is Raymondsville Falls, the tallest waterfall in Pennsylvania. The three tiers of the falls have a combined height of 150 feet. I hear eagles. Is that an eagle? It's still two feet deep, but it looks, it's so crystal clear that it looks like it's only four feet. We're coming up on Namanoc Island. It's about three and a half miles from Milford. There's some people on the left fishing. There's a hiking trail on the right side of the river. So we're gonna go on the right side of the island. We'll hug the right side to see if there's any camping spots. about 50 yards from the start of the island. You can see a few campers on the left already. There's a few, no, there's like four or five spots on Namanon. Looks like it's like 10, 15 feet up. They're off the water. So we're just past Namanok Island, Sandy Sun. It's about 4.85, just around five miles. There's a few campsites on the left. More of the same. You can see a path from the river. And you go about 10, 12, 15 feet up to the campsites that are buried in the woods. From the river, you can see the tents, but they're well hidden. <laughs> so if you can see the clouds behind us, just a little bit of gray. Super sunny. Super sunny. But super sunny in front of us. And then you pan behind us. Not so much. So it's 2 30. Hopefully we get in front of the rain before four. The water is just crystal clear. Five and a half miles in, and you start seeing the rain on the water. We've got some nice gray clouds in the sky to the right, coming right at us. Definitely a storm to the right. So. Just before Dingman's Ferry, just a little bit of rain. There's no sign of thunder or lightning, so we're just gonna paddle hard. Try to stay ahead of the rain. It's supposed to storm and thunder and lightning around four o'clock. I'd like to get to camp before then. So anytime in the next two hours. further right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well this is one heck of a I think now they can get a good river.
We're coming up in the Dingman's launch. It's concrete. There's pit toilets up there. Plenty of parking. Two miles down from the launch, you can find Dingman's and Silver Third Falls. Dingman's Falls is the second highest waterfall in Pennsylvania at 130 feet. Yeah, we're paddling on the Monday before July 4th tomorrow, and there's just no one on the river. And there will be a few spots right before Shatnack Island on the right. So we can go up to those, check them out, see if you like them, if there's people there. If you don't like them, hey, we'll just head to Shatnack and we'll camp on an island. All right, Carrie, <laughs> we're eight miles in. How you feeling? Oh, I'm great. I, it's amazing. This river, it's so beautiful. It's very similar to what we do in the west of PA. But I will say it's not a natural recreation area there. So here, you know, houses, beautiful, feels the same like depth and river, different for the canoe, but this is fun to try it out. Oh my God, there goes the eagle to the left, to the left, to the left, scan. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, what are you recording me for, dum-dum? <laughs> There's an eagle. Hornbeck site two. It was an okay site, not too bad. Fire ring, no bench. Not great views of the river. See there's number, is that the ace three or four? Not really. I think we shoot for the island at this point. There's two on this island. And if we miss this island, then there's three on the right up there. Okay. I'm guessing it's a no-go for this island. It just, looks, it just looks so overgrown. After Shrapnel Island, you should see a little indent up there on the right, and there should be three slots for Ashback access. Ashback? Yeah. One of those, yeah. About 13 miles in, another set of ripples. I know, I know. Just stay straight if we can. Yep, that's another campsite. Yep. There's two camp spots on the right. Further over to the right. Here we are at MC2. It's about maybe 20, 25 yards up to the campsite up this nice steep hill. So you have a fire pit, nice canopy coverage. Put a tent there, small tent there, small tent there, and then another large tent here overlooking the water. Nice spot for group or single camping. Got all of our stuff on the green tarp. Go. Got a nice fire pit. Tent set up. Enjoying one beer by the river as it's 80 degrees. Why it's wet. Oh, that blew up. I guess. That's why I don't want to leave anything in my car. All this is soaking, see? Yeah, it's dripping. So here's the mozzarella and the cheese. Hello. Hi, YouTube. Are you, are you getting my crabby ass moment? Yeah.
This is what's mi missing from YouTube. What? Four hours of cotton log. Well, you can stop it. <laughs> Getting breakfast ready. We got coffee, leftover pizza from yesterday, put on the cast iron so it's nice and crisp like it just came out of the oven. It's delicious. And coffee with marshmallows. We got an eagle. This is our, oh yeah, you hear the eagle again. Yeah. This is our lovely campsite. It's 11 a.m. Tuesday morning. Started to rain for the last half an hour. Gonna wait for that, then we're gonna head out. But luckily, here at our campsite, we are under a nice canopy where we can't even feel the rain. Packing up, getting ready to go. One o'clock, 4th of July. Already seen a ton of kayakers and canoers on the waters. Tons of bald eagles. Let's get going. There's going to be another bald eagle up on the right. Yeah, I saw him fly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. We're passing Buck Bar Island. We already see one tent up there. Nice rocky beach on the start of it. You can hear the road. You can see through the trees, you can see a blue tent. That's kind of what I was hoping for, like a, a rocky beach to sit down on. And only we knew, we needed two more miles. Yeah, that's the campsite. That's Tom's Creek campsite on the right before the rapids. One and a half miles from Eshbach. All right, we're at TC six, eight, and 10. It's only about six or eight feet up, so that's not too bad. There's a one, small, but grassy. This one's very spacious. Fire ring, a few flat spots. It's pretty good for a group. Maybe the best feature there's a porta potty up here with a huge spot. So this would be very good for groups or if you need a porta potty really bad. And it looks like a little dirt road coming into it. Straight, there's no boulders. We're good. Large group of kayakers on the left, group of kayakers in the middle of the river. Lots of people on the water today. So now we will have Valley View with a few sites on the right. Oh, okay. And then we'll have Bush Kill. There might be one site after these, these Valley View sites, but then it's Bush Kill access. Bearproof food lockers, yeah. recycling, trash, four toilets, big spots. Look at as a group. Like, say, Boy Scouts, church group. That's what I thought these were. Makes sense. There are a couple of them. 
Looks like a, you can drive it. They have actual restrooms. Yeah, there's a little road. Yeah, there's pit. It looks like four pit toilets total. It's just nice knowing the toilet I can use along the way. Coming up the Bush Kill access. Very popular takeout. We've seen at least, what, 20, 30 people? Mm -hmm. So it's a concrete ramp down. Doesn't look like a huge parking lot. There's, a there's another ramp, so 50 yards down, kayak ramp. Oh, there's an upper parking lot, yeah. Located four miles behind the Bushkill boat launch is the Bushkill Falls area. This area has eight waterfalls and it is privately owned, so there's a $20 fee to enter the park. It's a beautiful area, worth the money. It took us around two hours to see everything in the park. We're just before the big S in the river. There'll be Quinn and Peter's campsites on the left. There'll be Bushkill Creek on the right. We're gonna stop and have some lunch. You can see some kayakers on the left already. If we see a way up, I'll go check out those campsites as well. But until then, we're gonna enjoy a nice lunch in this 85 degree weather, cold sun. And it's supposed to thunderstorm right around now. It does not look like it's gonna happen. Right before the creek, there's a, another campsite. BC too? Yeah. So I'm guessing even numbers on the Pennsylvania side? Uh, maybe. And then odd numbers on the New yeah. Jersey side? It's like a house. Yeah. Took us 20 miles on the river to figure that out. <laughs> you can see those people on the left. I think that's Quinn. Some good campsites before the S starts. PE 17 looks very nice. Looks like there's two levels to it. And you'd have a great view of sunset. see him anymore. I've never seen a beaver that close. Uh oh, because he just hung out and ate. Second, third, first, second, fourth. Yeah. Alright, PE 21. Maybe a 10, 15-foot up. Oh, longer. Like that 25, 30. <laughs> Firing some tent spots, large trees, good for hammocks. Really good view of the river. So many beaver dens or dams. Oh, big trees were that Pennsylvania. 
A thousand deer. More eagles than I can count. An eagle nest. Huh? We saw a lot of baby ducks. We didn't see any like mallards or anything. No. I don't remember seeing any geese. This part's pretty clear. Yeah, it's very shallow. About a foot and a half, yeah. So those were the Peter campsites that we passed. And I think up ahead on the left are the Quinn campsites. Uh-huh. But it's getting late, so I think we're just gonna keep on keeping on. I think we get an idea. Yeah. People, I mean, there's people camping, for sure. It is hard to find good ones though. Maybe it's just because we're so used to the Allegheny ones that are a little bit, I feel like those are a little bit nicer maybe. But those are all people manicured, not like, I don't think the rangers go by. No, they're different campsites. There's lots of boulders here. Yeah, these are the Quinn sites on the left. Yeah, you see the sign? So Quinn is right after Peter's. Yeah. And yeah, even if you see that fallen tree on the left, there's a sign right there on that big tree past the fallen one. So the signs for Quinn are well visible, kind of in the middle of the S shape in the river, and there's the eagle. He got his meal. Why couldn't that eagle have done it when we were a little bit closer? Group sites, RB one through five. Here's a field, and there's an outhouse. I see trash cans and picnic benches. Probably bear boxes. But this looks like the group sites, one through five. Site back there. But I'm not walking all the way up there. It's a far walk down the water. All right, let's get to camp. Yes, please. I'm tired. I know. There's Turtle Island. Yeah, I'm tired. And there's rapids around it. Yeah, from the map. But they're just going to be class one rapids. There's a campsite on the right. Right there. It looks like it's not that high up. There should be, and there's another one. Yeah, there's three quick succession. It looks like the rabbits are on the left. Yeah. Wider and calmer. Let's go right. Oh yeah, here's another one on the right right before the island. This one looks like there's no air to even put in the kayak. You just have to go straight up. Oh, it's an osprey. Look at that thing, it's huge! No, go to the right! Right! Yeah. 
job. There's a path right up here. Here's AL4. It's pretty tiny. Not sure where you'd put a tent. Here's AL2. There's a flat spot. Fire ring. You have a little view of the water. Here's the pull up for two and four. We could not see it from the water. Here's R1. This might be the nicest site up here. So a large area for a tent. Maybe a hammock right there and you can kind of see the water through all the brush. But not really. Here's six and eight with the restroom. Saw the other ones, wasn't a big fan of them. Recommend getting other sites if you can. We're gonna head down to Hamilton, see if that's a good one. I tried to be happy. Yeah. Here's HA3, oh, a little bit of bugs. No footholds. I don't know. I'll just look first. Uh, it's not horrible actually. I don't know what kind of grill this is. Yeah, I'm still here. Yesterday. HA nine and 11. Which one did you take? 11, right here. So, there's 9 and 11, it's open, yeah. you can see the outhouse is right up there, maybe 30-50 feet, yeah. And unlike all the other sites, there's not a big hill to get up here, maybe like 6, 7, 8 feet, but there's not much growth, pushes from the view for the water. All around us. And you can see the sky all around us, and there's big trees, it's open, okay. not a ton of underbrush. This is perfect. So what we were looking for. Good job. All right. Only took looking at 15,000 sites. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you get to the outhouse, but... Well, there's a path right up here. Did you walk up there? Not yet, but I see another campsite up there. Oh look, you can see the power lines up there. Oh my god. Those are big boys. Yeah. No camping. Ooh, does not smell great. A little bit of toilet paper. So you probably have to go all the way around to get to the rest of the site. Yeah. How much do you think we're not going to die from those power lines? Here we are on our third day, starting off. We stayed at the Hamilton sites, nine and 11. They're right next to the little outhouse. We had a nice raccoon friend all night that tried to get into everything, so we didn't sleep well. And it stole, it got into our trash, it got into our camping bag. It stole our salt and pepper seasoning bag because we can't find it. So. We assume Mr. Reckon took it. He was. Oh, Eagle. Eagle. Matt found us a really beautiful site. It's all cleared out, beautiful views of the river. It was fantastic. So we have about five, six miles left today. To what beach are we get? What access are we going? Smithton. Smithfield Beach. We're going to Smithfield Beach to take out. 
Should be about maybe an hour and a half, two hours for the five miles. Beautiful day, high 80s, lots of sunblock. Let's go! The island, we're gonna go to the left a bit. It looks like there's rapids to the right. Very hard to tell. Game time decision, you went left or right. We're at the island. Which one looks wider? Right looks wider. Okay. And it's kind of taking us to the right. Left to right. I guess we're going right. All right, never mind. We're going right. Let's go. We got Depew Island on the left. There's supposed to be a camping site or two on the map. First 100, 200 yards of the island on the right. I see no camping spots. Uh -uh. And we don't know if they're right or left, huh? No. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful area. There's some rapids coming up. Yeah, okay. Do you not see them? No, I see them. No, the, the map. The, um, you don't see camping? There should be... The Pew Pew Island. There should be five sites on it. Uh, we're almost through the whole island on the right side. I don't see any. Have you seen any? No, I've been looking. Could be the other side. The right side of the Pew Island, there was no campsites on the right. Maybe try the left side. Well, I'm glad we didn't wait for this island to camp. We'd have been screwed. Yeah. So on the right side of the island, there's a little trail down to the river, but I'm not sure if there's a parking lot or it's another trail that leads down. There's a bunch of little kids there, so it can't be that far of a walk from the road here. So here we are at the end of Poxano Island, and if you see over the little grass field in the water, there's the access on the left. So you probably can't get to it from the left side of the island. So we saw a boat go around the corner and go up. You want to get to the access. So we're only about a mile away from Smithfield. Yeah, probably around the bend. We got people on the left. I don't know if that's another access. Some kayakers on the right. Got a group of rafters behind us that haven't moved in 12 minutes. At least they had one paddle with them. Somebody was smart. Glass. So on the left is Turtle Beach before Smithfield Beach. Looks like there's a building that might have a restroom, some concessions, a bunch of picnic benches with little roofs on them, maybe five, six feet of sand, and a large grass area. Looks pretty nice. 
It's also a good, it's a good trip to combo with other things in the area. Delaware River Gap has a, or Delaware Water Gap has a lot to offer. For just beautiful sites, beautiful waterfalls, hiking trails. On Wednesday, July 5th, we're ending our 28 mile journey down the Delaware River Gap. Of course, a boat's coming at us right now. <laughs> We've only seen like four boats in three days. Yeah, that hasn't been too bad. And nothing like that one. Yeah. We've seen little fishing boats. Where's he going? I'll move to the side. Oh, wait. He's coming right at me. You go left. Well, I can't go left. You gotta turn. You're gonna give a big wave. There's our rapids, class two. <laughs> okay then. Yeah. Two hour paddle on our last day. Six miles, not too bad.